Welcome to Wales, best of the west. And as part of this series, between me, Ollie and mine, we're going to take you to a couple of places across Wales. So tune in and see what the secrets are off the Welsh coast. After some awesome diving during the day and night at Porthas Gadan, we've headed east along the Gyrn Peninsula to the small fishing village of Porthnichain. Porthnichain is also somewhere that I grew up, where I spent much of my childhood snorkeling the many bays which are found around the headland. But we're here for one main reason. Hidden below the waves in front of the village itself and the iconic Tir Cochin, is one of the most important habitats found along the Welsh coast, which are the seagrass meadows. The one here in Pothnikain is one of the largest and densest found off the Welsh coast. Seagrass meadows are important habitats as they are home to a diverse range of species and provide a variety of ecosystem services, from coastal protection, producing oxygen and carbon sequestration. So we're going to dive here in the day and also when the sun sets later on this evening to see what other species we can find at night. So we're going to kit up and enter the water and it's, it's not a very deep site especially as a shore dive it's getting up to four meters five meters so it should be really good and look forward to showing you why seagrass habitats are really important habitats Seagrass in both side, which is one of the largest meadows in Wales. Diving the seagrass is unlike any of the UK habitat. It feels almost like it takes you away to a different tropical country with the contrasting green and the blue on a day like today where it's really clear. It's every of the most important habitats in the Welsh coast. It provides a lot of different ecosystem services from carbon sequestration to nursery areas for important fish species such as place, dab and cod and hopefully we can find a few of those species here in the meadow this afternoon and also this evening when we get in here at night. As you can see here the seeds of the seagrass grow similar to that of a plant on land. They have these large reproductive shoots that are much taller and very in colour and each one within that are those of those seeds. So in the UK we have two seagrass species, which is the Zostra marina, which is what this species here is, and Zostra norte, which is the dwarf seagrass, which grows in other places around Wales, such as the Inland Sea. And as you can see, there are reproductive shoots throughout all this bed, which is a good sign. And as part of Swansea's Sky Ocean Rescue Project, they're collecting these seeds to then do a restoration project down in Pembrokeshire, in Dale, where they will take the seeds, germinate them in the lab, and then take them out in the field, and in the long term, hopefully restore one of the birds down in South Wales, which has been a great project and really exciting one too, and the first one of its kind in Wales. Looking forward to seeing the results of this in the upcoming years. Also, amongst the seagrass we have here is the invasive seaweed, Sargassum, which is quite a prolific invasive species, but currently there's not doing any impact on the seagrass here. However, it is being monitored for any potential impact. And as you can see here, the seeds are on these reproductive shoots. And as lion plants, they also flower. And during the summer months, these can go very high, up to a metre sometimes, which is great to see because it shows that the bed is healthy and a reproductive state. Let's go see what species we can find amongst the seagrass. Right? 
Because of its density, it makes it pretty hard to find some of these camouflage species. There's a range of things that we tend to find. Quite often you get the greater pipefish and the snake pipefish, which is quite a large one. And again, like Porth Scadan, there's a good number of sticklebacks that you can find hiding amongst the seagrass. And occasionally you can see them going around with nesting material. Here's a 50 spine stickleback, which is just zeeking through the seagrass. You can see they're well camouflaged with that green coloration. Quite often you see a range of snake locks in them attached to the blades of seagrass. Some which are an orange in colour. There's some of them you can see that have purple tips, which similar to coral reefs have a symbiotic algae in there, that's what creates this colour and they help to create energy for the anemone. One of the more common species that you get amongst this seagrass are the two spot gobies that often sit above the seagrass. But as soon as they're disturbed, they go straight in to hide. Finding species in the day is quite tricky in the seagrass. So by diving at night, we hope that some of them decide to come out a bit more and actively hunt. So we'll see how that goes later on this evening. As we go into sunset like it is now, we hope that things start to appear and we get out and get ready for this evening's dive and show more of what hides beneath the seagrass at night. After waiting for the sun to set, we prepared the cameras to explore the seagrass at night. Diving the seagrass at night is always exciting as you never know what you'll find amongst the seagrass blades. However, we aren't doing it the normal way. We're going to be using fluoro, which is an ultraviolet light, which provides a new view of the underwater world. So we have a few sun spelt that are just hidden away amongst the seagrass. Place the number of flatfish species that we get off the Welsh coast. And are distinct by their bright orange spots along their dorsal side. One of the best looking fish. See how well they camouflage into the sand with a few flicks of their fins they're under. Here we have two floaters that sat here together. Just at the shallows are one meter. Quite a few floaters are swimming around from a range of sizes from adults to juveniles. So here we have a little bobtail squid. Oh it's great to see these little guys. The little bobtail squid get attracted to the plankton that come to the light. When they want to hide, they'll quickly bury themselves in the sand and they're pretty good at doing the job. There's a nice sea scorpion and a top ambush predator that I found amongst the reef. 
The sea scorpion is waiting patiently for its next meal. It's already striped for a few fish here. It's also a little tempted to get the bobtail squid. So when we come to the seagrass, we're going to try doing full row and see what will reflect the light that is different by a luminescence with the different epiphytes that grow on it. They do an ultraviolet colour, which is really cool. Let's see what other species we can see that will do the same effect. The UV light really does a good work on the snake nook of Sinemony. Really bright set up into a neon green colour. It's amazing to see what difference it is. It's glowing. So cool. It's really cool. So it's cool to see what the difference the fluoro makes. Other species such as corals will do the same, but unfortunately we don't have them at this site. Finally, we managed to get a cat shark. So it's straight past us on the hunt through the seagrass. Let's see, you can see where she goes. Nope, she's just resting. Well, let's see if we can find another shot. Well, I didn't think we'd be this lucky. There's another type of shark that we get off the Welsh coast, which is the bullhouse. And it's the larger cousin of the cat shark that we found earlier. It's really exciting that there are both species found here. Let's see what happens when we try and put the fluoro light on this. No, in the other cases, the other shark species do glow. And cat sharks are definitely one of those species that do show a glow to ultraviolet light. So here's a species we don't see very often up here in North Wales. It's a red mullet. It's great to see them, but they're a species that are often found more on the southern coast. And over the years, there's been more and more sightings of them up north. But let's see what happens when we light it up with the UV light. Well, we didn't expect that, but look at the colour change. As you put the UV light on, it shows us it's reacting with that UV light. It's great to find another species that does this. Along with all the, way, the spectacular show from the anemone. So it's now 2 a.m. in the morning. We, uh, we weren't expecting to be underwater for that long. We did a two and a half hour dive, but there was just so much to see when you were just swimming through the seagrass that you just didn't see in the day. Quite an abundance actually this evening with the long spine sea scorpions and they were really on the hunt. They were really trying to go for the fish. And even one of them was taking a bit of a fancy to the bobtail squid. When we turned off the lights and put the UV on, it really changed the whole atmosphere of what it was like diving at night. And one thing we really didn't expect was the seagrass to actually turn bright red, which was really amazing. And again, completely different to what we thought it was gonna be. Um, the species like the snake locks and anemones were, were really glowing quite intensively, but we were quite surprised that the, the lesser spotted cat shark didn't glow because we kind of expected it to glow um, green. So we might try that again in a different site. It might be individual based or it might be at different sizes. So that'd be something we'd be really keen to see. We also weren't expecting to see a red mullet. That's one species that does glow 
quite vividly. So you're changing from this red coloration into a neon green as soon as that UV light hits it. Diving the seagrass is amazing and it's not like any of the habitat we do have off the Welsh coast. We we'll look forward to sharing more of the wonders that are found below the waters off the Welsh coast. We've been really fortunate, but we never know every time we get in the water, there's something different that could be seen or could be found. So we were really fortunate to have this diverse range of species and habitats off the Welsh coast. In the next episode, we were heading down to South Wales to dive the deepest shore dive in Wales, which is Martins Haven, part of the Scoma Marine Nature Reserve in Pembrokeshire. Join us in discovering more about this diverse site and why it's home to so many unique species and habitats. Mm -hmm.